So Reese, um, big win for you tonight here in Cage Warriors. Like, I mean, how, how do you feel coming into this Cage Warriors 100 massive event? Yeah, cool. You know, uh, a lot of people were asking, you know, is it different? Is it, is it new for you? But at the same time, I kind of have always been brought up in my MMA career as it's a cage everywhere you go. It's the same cage. It's, it's just different, a different color of gloves and a different canvas, so to speak. So I felt comfortable. I, I felt excited to fight again. It's been six months since my last one. So to be honest, I, I was just excited to fight and it was a brilliant night. Fantastic. How do you feel this kind of year's gone for you? It's been a very weird one. Obviously fighting in Bama, that seems to now come to an end. You've got a new life here in Cage Warriors. Yeah. How, how do you look on upon 2018 now? Yeah, it's, it's been a weird year. As you said, I got off to such an amazing start with the Tim Tim fight, then I took the Terry fight, and then obviously I'm finishing on high, so it's a two-in-one year. It's a bit of a quiet year. I was ready for a lot of the year, a lot of the, the later end of this year, but I think that showed tonight. Uh, and I'm happy to finish on a, on a high, and I'm looking forward to 2019. When that kind of Bama stint came to an end, a lot of other guys in kind of the UK and Ireland got offered to go to Bellator. You went to Cage Warriors. What happened there? Like, What offers were kind of on the table? For you. Uh, just okay, I'm not going to name promotions, but there was offers from multiple promotions. Uh, but Cage Warriors was a uh, Cage Warriors was, was the direct route to the UFC for me, and that's why I'm here doing my craft. I could have took a payout and went to Bellator, uh, had a bit of nice money in the bank for Christmas, but I'm in the longevity of the career. I'm a young guy, and uh, I'm here for the long run. Do you feel like you've reminded everyone what you're all about here? Because obviously, when you were Bama champion, everyone was talking about you as one of the most outstanding prospects between the UK and Ireland. I think a win like that gets you back into that kind of terrain. Yeah, you know, but there was a lot of hype coming into this fight. A lot of eyes were on the fight, and you know, I noticed that. I, I'm a social media savvy guy, so I, I noticed that. But uh, it was important to get the job done. And if I remind it, everybody want my bite, then so be it. But they never should have forgot, in my opinion. You had to get the towel out there for the weigh-in yesterday. Like, I mean, is that? Are you thinking about well the way I now haven't had this performance? You definitely your future's at lightweight. Well, to be honest, I, I'm used to weighing at 10 a.m. So we tried the approach of uh, making weight in the morning, which was fantastic. It was brilliant. We only, uh, if we had five more minutes in the bath, it, there would have been no issue at all and the towel would have been brought out. That being said, I am six foot, I think I'm I think borderline six three now, so 77 is coming. Uh, whether it's the next fight or what a few more at 70, who knows, but listen, I'm up for both. Like I've told Cage Warriors before, if they want me to fight sooner rather than later, I'll do Willer. If they want to give me a longer time, I'll do Lightweight, but uh, who knows what will we'll be next. Is there any names jumping out for you at the moment? My name at the minute, my name tonight, that's the only name I really care about. You finished 2018, I guess, on a high now. What, what do you look at 2019? What are the goals? Just keep doing race and uh, keep putting people away. Uh, I want to improve my game. Uh, I have a few exciting things coming up in terms of training and stuff, so I'll let them play fire for now. And, and then 2019 will be on heavy again, no doubt. Moving on to the technical aspects of the fight, it seems like you started slow, quite cautious, and then when you, feel, when you felt his power, you kind of felt comfortable walking through his shots. Was that the turning point? Yeah, you know, like I said to Rodney, the coach, like, a big part of this fight, you know, I, I come in not respecting uh, Jefferson George too much, but, you know, I, I felt his power would be phenomenal. I felt like everything he'd done would be phenomenal, and I get in and I realise, hold on a minute, I, I'm the guy here, so, uh, and then I overtook the fight, uh, but it was a good approach. I went in, I respect him to the highest. A lot of people uh, rated me as the clear night favourite, and Jefferson had no chance. And I think I might be one of only four people, me and my corner team, that rated him very highly. And I had a lot of respect for Jefferson, and that's why the, that fight, the game plan, uh, panned the way it did. And motivation wise, did you feel this is what you needed at this point in your career? Because you know, Bama was the promotion that you made your pro debut on. Did you feel like you kind of. Motivation-wise, hit a ceiling with them, and you needed a new opportunity to really excite you and get your blood pumping. I mean, a smart answer would be to say yes, because we can stem the whole cage wars thing. But I mean, I was a world champion in Bama; it could have been amazing too. So. I'm not going to sit and say I was a flatline the Bama because it could have been whatever. But listen, Cage Warriors is where I'm at now. I'm doing my craft. I'm excited. I, I loved it. I've had an amazing night, and it's it's good. No, it's good. And there's no one you want to call out, or you're happy to let people out. Who do you want me to call out? Alex Lahore. He just beat Tim Barnett. So Did he beat Tim Barnett. No problem. I fight him. In, I fight him in the morning. Yeah. Mason no Jones. No problem. Any anybody you say tonight will be no problem. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> uh, send me location. <laughs> Thank you very much. Nice stuff, Reese. Thanks for your time. Thank you.